Hey everyone, welcome to our Let's Create series, a series where we'll create mechanics from popular games using blueprints. This week we're going to be covering the super hot bullet time mechanic. This is where time only moves when you move. We'll also cover the shooting mechanic, and then you can expand on it from there. If you're new to this series, make sure to watch my Let's Create Foundation video before starting this lesson. If you've been here since the start, welcome back, let's get started. So, since we're using our project that we created together, we can get straight into the blueprints rather than messing around with any setup. Before we begin, we want to duplicate our FPS controller. And the reason why is we want to have our FPS controller as a template. And for every single new lesson, we want to make a new controller. So this will be called the super hot controller. We then want to open up our game mode. And for this lesson, we want to make sure instead of the default pawn class being FPS controller, we want to make sure it's the super hot controller. And if you did my foundation series, you know that, uh, sorry, foundation video, you know that this controls what player will spawn in. So just hit compile, save, and close that off. The next thing we want to do is go to settings, project settings, and we need to create a input for shooting. So we've already set this up last time. Let's create a input and we're going to call this shoot. Now we can use this for every other lesson we have and we'll use this for the mouse left, left mouse button. All right, so now what we can do is open up the super hot controller and we can just begin going straight into blueprints. So what we want to start with is the slow motion for the game, which is the bullet time. And in order to do that, we need to use an event tick, which will update every frame. So we're going to create a event tick node and put it just here. We're then going to, before we touch this bit, we're going to go to our movement input. And what we need to do is we need to know if we are pressing A, D, W, or S, or in this case, our vertical or horizontal input. In order to do that, we need to create a variable or two variables. So the first one is h axis. Uh, what h axis is, and just make that a float for now, what h axis will do will be plugged into the axis value. The axis value when no buttons are being pressed is zero. If you watched my last lesson, when you press a button such as a or d, it can go negative one or plus one. So what this means is when H axis is zero, we're not moving, which means time can slow down. If H axis, which is a horizontal input becomes negative one or plus one, that means we are moving. So that means time will speed up. So what we can do is get the H axis set, drag that into there, and then we can take the axis value and put it into H axis. We need to do the exact same thing for V axis. So we're just going to set this here. And the set node's really nice. So put the axis value into there. And I'll just drag this out a little bit. So now that we've set that, we know exactly when we're moving. <clears throat> so because we know when we're moving, and because we know time only moves when we're moving and time slows down when we're not moving, we need a condition. So we need a branch. And the result of the branch, if true, we're going to use something called set global time dilation. So set time, whoops, set global time dilation. This controls how fast the game is the game world is running. So when when this is true, which will be when we are moving, we want time to be one. If time is one, the game runs at normal speed. If it's false, so set global time dilation is false, we want to choose a different speed, something like 0 0.05. That means the game will run this quickly and everything will appear in slow motion. The next thing we want to do is determine what the condition is. And we already set that up here. So we just need to have and 
is not equal to, which I'll show you in a second, we just need to check if these are not equal to zero. So we're going to use the mathematical operator is not equal to. Before we do that, let's get these two values. Then we can drag off and type in exclamation mark equal is not equal to float. So what this operator, what this check is, this condition means is if this value is not equal to whatever value we put in here and this value here is not equal to whatever we put in there, that means this condition up here will be true. Oh wait, sorry, one sec. If this, if this is not equal to zero, or this one is not equal to zero, this will be true, which means time will go to one. That means we are moving. If these are equal to zero, that means time will be slow. So we're gonna have an or operator here and put this into there. And then we're going to plug that into condition. So let me explain this one more time that we have everything together. <clears throat> First, we, we're gonna check every frame if this value has changed. This value only changes when you have moved using one of these axes. If these values are equal to zero, this will be false because we're checking if it's not equal, which means time will slow down. If these values go to negative one, plus one, anything that is not zero, then time will be set back to normal. So let's drag this over here, press C once you've selected it all. And this will be our um, bullet time. And we can test that out right now. So minimize that. To, in order to test it out, let's create some physics objects. So I'm going to drag this over here. We're going to go to our geometry and put a box in. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, basic cube. And we're just going to make sure we have simulate physics on. So if we have simulate physics on and gravity is enabled in the physics tab, that means it can fall. If it's falling, we can see if our time manipulation is working. The other thing is you might notice my actor is spawning facing this wall. So I'm just going to rotate the actor 180 degrees so I can face this way. And then I'm going to make a few of these so we can see what's happening. And full screen and hit play. So as you can see here, time is going 0.05 now. And then when I move, it goes to one. And that's all a result of the H axis and V axis not being equal to zero, which is really cool. So we've now got the time mechanic. What we're going to do now is quickly put in the shooting mechanic. So we're going to create a new blueprint. We're going to create an actor. We're going to call this bullet. Actually, we should call this a super hot bullet in case we create other types of bullets. And then we're going to open this up. And for our bullet, all we need to do is create a static mesh, or actually we can just create a cube. We're going to scale this down. So let's try 0 0.3, then see what we get, 0 0.2. And then I'll just make it a bit longer there. We are then going to simulate physics and disable gravity. We want to simulate physics because we're going to actually add a physics force and impulse to this bullet, but we don't want gravity because we don't want it to fall. The only other thing we need to do is set up a box collider. So a box collision. And we then need to modify the extent so the, the collision box is set up correctly. It doesn't have to be perfect. Whoops. And then what we're going to do is compile, save, and we've set up the bullet. So now we can call this bullet from our super hot controller. 
in order to do that, we need to go down here. And before, if you remember, we created a shoot event, which is our left click. So if we shoot, we need to use something called spawn actor from class, which allows us to spawn anything we want within this class here. In this case, we want to spawn our super hot bullet. We then need a spawn transfer, which we can set up in our viewport. So go to your viewport, left click in the add component, and we're going to create a scene object, which is just an empty object that sits and we can use it as a reference for where we want the bullet to come from. So if we had a gun model, um, you can make it come from the chamber, but we're just going to make it come from the center of the character from about out here. Compile, save. Now you notice there's an error because we don't have the transform set up, which is what our scene component is for. We could actually just rename this bullet position, spawn position. We can then go into our event graph and now we can get this. Now it's asking for a transform. So I'm just going to type in transform here and you'll see get world transform, which we can then plug into our spawn transform. Now that we've got that set up, all we, what we can do next is impulse and add impulse. We just get it on the, the box and then we'll plug this into here. Add impulse will make this bullet fly in the air at a certain speed and a certain direction. We want it to go from the direction we are facing. So we're going to get the camera. We are then going to get the world rotation of the camera. So we know what, what rotation the camera is facing. And then we're going to get the Ford vector. The Ford vector is the front position of the camera. So if we're rotating a certain way, this is what we're looking at. If you want to think about it like that, the Ford vector is what we are looking at. We then want to times this by a float because remember impulse, it needs a direction, but it also needs a speed to travel at. If it doesn't have that speed to travel at, the bullet will be at a standstill. Let's make it something like 10,000. And then we can plug this into impulse, hit compile and save. We can then drag along that, press C, and this can be our shooting. So once again, we left click, it spawns an actor. The position, the transform comes from our bullet spawn, which is here. Then what we do is we add an impulse to this actor that we created and we can get the actor by using the return value. We then tell it that we want it to fire from whatever direction the camera is looking at at this speed. So compile, save. So left click, left click. And you notice they're not moving at the moment. So I've made a mistake. So let's see what I've done. So let's go to this. Let's, let's just look at our super hot bullet and make sure I put on simulate physics. So cube simulate physics. Box. Oh, okay, I didn't turn it on there. So let's see that again. So what it looks like I've done is I've got the wrong component here. So I'm going to delete that and we're going to get the cube. So let's do this. And then it lines up with cube. There we go. So we can actually just disable what we did here on the box. We're, going, we're using the cube. So make sure this is Whoops. Make sure this is the cube. Once again, you can just most likely drag that into there and it will become cube. All right, let's see what happens. Awesome. So we got that mechanic. I'm going to full screen this. Alt P is a shortcut for play and we can shoot and they're going to fly off and it's all going to work at different speeds, which is really nice because we're using that super hot time mechanic. And at the moment, we've got it set up. So as fast as you can left click is as fast as the actors um, is as fast as you can shoot.
So if you use our lesson of delays and booleans, you can now go set up your own timer so you don't have bullets spawning all the time. And you can probably figure out how to do your own ammo system, which would be really nice, a really nice thing to try and do by yourself. If you wanted to push these boxes out of the way, you can increase the mass of the bullet and then decrease the mass of the boxes. This looks so cool. I like this. Awesome. So now we've now we've gone through the super hot time mechanic, which is slow motion. And slow motion's been around for a while. So if you play Max Payne and stuff, slow motion isn't just a super hot thing. But this style where time only moves when you move is something that is unique to super hot at this point. And now you know how to spawn projectiles, which you can do for all types of games. And it is it is really cool to be able to speed up the bullets. Like watching it fly, it's really nice to be able to see them speed up when you move. So now we got this cool scene where everything's kind of moving a little bit, but not. And then when you move fast, when you move, it goes back to normal speed. So I hope you really enjoyed this lesson. Um, feel free to play around with this mechanic and get more out of it. There is a lot you can do with just this, this simple little setup we did in our super hot controller. And I really hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something useful out of it. And in next week's lesson, we're going to cover Trace's recall. So I hope you look forward to next week. And remember, as always, pursue what is important to you because impossible is just a mindset. I'll see you in the next video.